All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna call our Thursday, March 9th, 2023, Airport Advisory Board meeting to order. Um, in the absence of a recording secretary, I'm calling the roll for tonight. Um, Malcolm Dean. Here. Talis Salamatine. Here. Steve Shook. Here. Harrison Earl, here. Councilmember Martin. Here. Um, Levi Brown, Airport Manager. Here. Bill Greenwald, Transportation Planning Manager. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, first item on our agenda is election of new vice chairperson. So you'll notice our four, our quorum here is all we've got. Um, we've had uh, Russell leave the board, so he was elected vice chair last meeting in January. So we're opening up elections for a new vice chairman for our other officer position. Are there any nominations from any board members for a vice chairperson? Okay, uh, Mr. Dean, self-nominate, I will second. Okay. Would anyone else? Okay, any further discussion? Motion on the floor. All those in favor of Mr. Dean, elected a vice chairman, say aye, please. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, congratulations. Aye. Vice Chair Dean. Next item on our agenda is a public invited to be heard. Anyone is welcome. Um, I will note we have two action items on the agenda. As we have done in past meetings, I'll have a public invited to be heard for each of those action items. So if you'd like to speak about either of those particularly, you are welcome to wait until later. You're also welcome to come forward now if you choose to. Um, so with that, I'll open up the public invited to be heard. Whoever would like to, come on down. Just a reminder of the rules for everyone. You have uh, five minutes, I'm keeping time. Please start with your name and address, address your comments to the board and please be respectful. Hi. This is Al Manley, 940 Range View Lane, 80501, Longmont. Um, just one thing here. Um, uh, I'm going through a lease renewal on the south side. This would be the first, uh, as far as I'm aware of, the first leases uh, that are up for renewal on the south side. And I just have a brief statement here, comment, a question, etc. cetera. Uh, the two Victor two hangar owners, hangar owners association leases on the south side have reached the initial, initial lease term of 20 years. We, the 2 Victor 2 HOA, wanted to renew the existing lease for another 20 years, but that wasn't offered as an option as stated in the lease. In place of the renewal, we received a draft copy of the new hangar lease template. Comparing the, the two lease documents, the existing lease that was approved at the December 2022 City Council meeting, in the draft template that was received, we noticed a modification that didn't match, you know, between the two documents. So my question is, should the unapproved modified version of the draft lease be used in place of the master lease that was approved by the city council in December of 2022? And if the answer is yes, uh, just a follow-on question, um, comment. It seems to me if the master lease can be modified without city council approval, you know, the, the formal process of the city to approve these documents, doesn't that diminish the integrity of the master lease itself? Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to uh, come forward and speak? The first public invited to be heard. Hello, uh, my name is Colin Dealman, 5521 West 103rd Avenue, Westminster, 80020. Um, this is my first uh, approach to the board, but um, I have interest in becoming the new um, FBO on the airport. I am uh, speaking with uh, Chuck and Julie Myers of Elite Aviation and just looking for some advice on um, negotiations on the terms, um, any future or current um, considerations of the land leases or anything associated with the hangar, the FBO, and whatnot, just seeking advice um, because I have not been here for any other board meetings and would just like to catch up, I guess. So um, thank you for your time. 
Thank you very much. Any other public invited to be heard? Dave Kopp, 4625 West 99th Place, Westminster, Colorado. And uh, see, wanted to start, uh, you know, Al brought up on this lease deal. The, uh, this is one of the biggest customers on the airport, uh, maybe the biggest. You know, we're talking 60,000 plus square foot of hangars. And uh, first 20 years on this one, one of the newest uh, hangars to come up for renewal. And I was uh, disappointed that uh, the master lease isn't what they sent out. In fact, they didn't send anything out. We had to go back and ask them for something. They wanted to do a, a Microsoft Teams meeting. I think the pandemic's over. I think the biggest customer airport deserves a face-to-face -face meeting uh, with its officers of the 2v2 Condo Association. And uh, to talk through, let's see the lease you got, and let's go through it. The, uh, we asked for some advanced copy of it, sent us a blank lease. No numbers, nothing. So. Pretty cavalier, and then we noticed some changes on it, and uh, says, "Hey, uh, what are these?" I mean, you had something approved by the advisory board and the city council, and the bottom line is there's changes. What are the changes? Don't you have them highlighted or anything? No, you'll have to go through a comparison side by side and figure out what the changes are. What kind of customer service is this for the biggest customer in the airport? Doesn't make any sense. The uh, uh, We don't know what other changes are in there. We haven't gone through them side by side. The, uh, the one thing we did notice is that there's a million dollar liability for all personal vehicles on the airport. Well, I've flown into a lot of airports. I've, been, I've had hangers on two airports in Colorado, here in Jefferson County, now called Metro, and they don't have a million dollar liability on personal vehicles. You get a badge, you, get, you just follow Colorado law, right? $100,000 liability is comfortable for the whole rest of the airport, airports in Colorado, and everywhere I've ever landed. Never question. In fact, most of the places I land, they give me a courtesy car. They don't even care if I got a driver's license or insurance. Of course, they're not the nicest cars, but they're a car. They'll get you from A to B. The, um, and along with that, if you look at this new lease, 21.10 says that uh, this, the lease shall be governed and construed by the laws of Colorado. Well, the laws of Colorado say $100,000 liability is fine for the rest of the world. What the hell's wrong with us? You can't possibly manage this. You can't, the visitors that come in, you're gonna card them and see what, if they got a million dollar liability? What about the skydivers? You got half the south side over there. You don't monitor anything in or out of there. Ridiculous. The, uh, he gave a lot of accolades to uh, the new airport manager. He's coming up on his one year anniversary. I wanted to give you a little, my perception as a customer that uh, yeah, got great accolades on a 3,000, 4,000 feet of sewer line over there. I didn't see one manhole in 4,000 foot of sewer. You can't even jet 4,000 feet of sewer. So those should have been added. When the last uh, modernization of the water and sewer was done, at Longmont, they included both water and sewer. No water was added back over there. So now the expectation is you're gonna attract a developer uh, and ask them to come up with a million and a half dollars for uh, upfront for uh, uh, storm sewer drainage, raise the elevation. You're not gonna attract anybody. And you got no water over there. And the existing customers that are down there that want water got, got roughed in and everything. You didn't need to do any half taps on these things. Now you gotta do a 180 degree loop to get back to the new plan where the sewer line is. So the bottom line, I don't think uh, I would grade him very high in this performance, even though the sewer is in. And now we got new grass seed, but no manholes, no half taps, no idea. You gotta, you're gonna have to uh, radio code out where the hell the sewer line is, dig back down to it to get tied to it. And the, uh, the uh, annual performance review we got last, uh, last session was pretty weak. I mean, it was the worst I've seen in the 20 years I've been here. There was no income and expense report. We have no idea how much money came in and where it went out. 
I see $50,000 Bobcats sitting out there that somehow we're paying for, not in use. The uh, no awareness of what the uh, real plans are coming up, what kind of grants we got approved. So overall, for uh, Levi's first year, I'd give him a D minus. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak at this time? Okay, seeing nobody. Next item on our agenda is approval of our January 2023 minutes. Do any board members have any comments, revisions, anything they'd like to see changed? No? I have, I think one, um, page one, line 22. Um, this is the election of officers. It says that uh, board member Robeson dissented on his own nomination for vice chairman. Um, I believe it should be abstain, not dissent. If there's nothing else, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes with um, that amendment. Hold on. Is that um, Mr. Shook? Oh. Sorry. A motion to approve the minutes as written or with the uh, with the minutes. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Item six, updates from the airport manager. Levi. All right. I've got a few updates for you guys uh, this week. I'll go through them, and if there's any questions, I'll just go through them A, B, C, D. If you have any questions, I'll leave a little spot at the end of each one there for you guys. Uh, Southwest Sewer Project is pretty much all wrapped up. It was just processing the paperwork this week to close out on that project. Um, they did also get the grass seed planted, and then they got hay down put on it. So everything's buttoned up. Um, it's all past inspection. Uh, things are looking really good. Um, a little bit of a project left, just need to double check, make sure we're repairing uh, some of the perimeter road and the turnaround area for the skydiving outfit, but beyond that, um, everything is 100% done. Uh, any questions on the Southwest Sewer Project? Mr. Shuck. So we heard from Dave Kopp about mm -hmm. manholes and things like that. Can you comment on that? I can comment from the manholes I've inspected myself. There's at least two along the route. I think there's actually a third. There's one at the terminus also. So there's manholes. In fact, that was one of the things on our cleanup list was we needed to regrade around the manholes to make sure that they were to spec. We had a gap of about four inches. We wanted them level with the rest of the ground. Okay. Mr. Dean. Yeah, a quick question, Levi. Um, you said you put grass seed down. Was it drought resistant? And what kind of grass seed did you use? It was. Um, we, I can't remember the exact one, but we had discussions about that during the meeting as we wanted, of course, low maintenance uh, Colorado native grass out there that would grow naturally. So that was planted. And then proper mitigation to make sure that hopefully it grows the best that it can with the, the hay and stuff like that. Perfect. That was actually kind of the last thing. On the whole list, really the project's been done, done, but we've been waiting on uh, March to get that grass in to give it the best chance for, for growing come this spring. Perfect. Thank you much. Anyone else on the sewer project? Go ahead, Levi. All right. Uh, prairie dog mitigation. So as we've discussed at other airport advisory board meetings. Can you speak into the mic? Oh, is it? There we go. A little closer here. Is that better? Yeah. All right, so we've discussed at other uh, airport advisory board meetings. Um, we had FAA inspection last year, and there was a, a, definitely a concern about the prey dog holes. Um, so we're pressing forward with doing a complete airport mitigation. Um, plan is, and we've covered this at other meetings, but I do a full uh, clean with six peck machines on every hole in the airport, come back, now the plan is two days later, and do it all again, do all the dugout holes. The concept being to get just the, the hardest hit we can on it, and then the uh, city's wildlife department <clears throat> can hopefully come in after that and, and keep on top of it. So that's the plan. That is moving forward. Um, we got all the money moved around in the airport budget. We need to do that. POs have been created. Um, we are going to go with, I think in the last minutes, I mis mentioned 
the company was, which was it, DHQ Ranch Services, and they will be doing that service. They're going to be starting hopefully Tuesday. So I spoke with him this morning. They're supposed to be out here Tuesday. They'll be here for about a week with their first push. They'll have a couple day pause, and then they'll do another whole airport push. So that's moving forward quickly. Any questions on Prairie Dog? Mr. Dean, hold yeah. on, hold on. Sorry. Let me actually get you. You had a, a possible uh, price that was going to cost the city for that. Yeah. I made the uh, the PO for $43,000. It's all based on hourly rate, and so it's hard to say exactly what it's going to be. But that's kind of uh, our best guess. The, they put it up. We had the wildlife guys kind of assess it based on their hourly rate and what they'd be doing, and they said, yeah, that looks pretty close. So that's where we're sitting at right now. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. No one else? Okay. Next one, engineering consultant update. Um, I put this on the agenda with the greatest of hopes that I would be able to update more about this, but uh, we are still technically in the cone of silence because of signatures on paper. So I, I know Talis knows more about it because he was part of that process, but technically via city r rules, we're still in the cone of silence. So we can't talk too much about that. I can say that we are incredibly close to the point where I checked this morning um, <laughs> to see if I could talk about this. And then it's, it, it seems like most things are signed. It's maybe just a transit of paperwork and making sure it's in the right people's hands right now. Uh, so we can, we can uh, move forward with, uh, yeah, and we can send out, certainly we will send out a communication when that's all, all official. I was, again, in this month's, uh, airport update. I had it all prepped up and written up to make the announcement of that engineering consultant and uh, I had to pull that from the, the email kind of last minute. But any, any answer, uh, questions on that that I could talk about anyway? Uh, Levi, is that something that has to go to council for their approval once you have no. signatures? Okay. So that's just, we've gone through the uh, rather painful process of the, the kind of standard procurement pro uh, through this to the city, so that's supposed to be all we need to do. So really, it's just signatures, and to my understanding, really all that's been signed and done is just really our procurement department making the official announcement that we are out of the cone of silence and we can proceed forward. Fair enough. Any questions from anyone? Air show meeting? Okay, air show meeting. So we have set up for Saturday at 9 a.m., at the Public Works and Natural Resources Field Office, which is right next to the airport, for you the, who are familiar with it. You might know it if you've ever tried to navigate to the airport by putting it in your uh, map on your cell phone, because it takes you to that office instead of the, the, the airport for some reason. Um, but we'll be having a meeting there at 9 o'clock Saturday morning, and what we're doing is just trying to get a basic idea of who's interested in helping out on the air show and trying to start organizing things to a point where we have an organization that we can move forward with and actually get some things accomplished. So that'll be nine o'clock on Saturday morning. Tell your friends. I sent that out in its own email. I also sent that out in the airport update and the address and the times and locations are on that also. Have you gotten much response from people saying they're likely to be there? I've gotten two people RSVP'd. Um, I kind of said, hey, please RSVP if uh, you know you don't have to but show up if you don't um, Belinda told me actually that she's ha heard a little bit more about interest um, so she's kind of hopeful that we will have a, at least a small crowd at least to the point where I'm gonna go buy donuts just in case um, so if anyone else wants to show up just for donut come, come I, I was get gonna a donut. say donut should be in I'm, the email so I'm getting yeah. I'm getting Lamar's so yeah exactly so that'll be Saturday morning, 9 a.m. at the Public Works uh, field office. Okay. Any questions on that? Comments from anybody here on that? Oh, there's another one. That's, a, that's RSVP. I'll consider that. All right. yeah. It's not, sorry. I put the address in the communications. Yeah. Okay, seeing nobody else there. Um, Levi, anything else? And your update. Uh, that's what I got. Yep. Um, can I ask you, 
Um, I'm not asking about any particular lease or negotiation that you're in. Mm -hmm. However, there are concerns that were raised about lease modification from the master lease, mm -hmm. um, and particularly the insurance requirement. Can you talk at all about that and where that stands? I can talk a little about that. That's something that actually the, the risk department came to me about and saying that we needed to alter. Apparently, it's, it's changed over the years. And another thing was brought up is... I didn't have a list of exactly what's changed in the lease. Well, the problem is over the last 20 years, there's actually been several incarnations of leases. So any one given person's lease that's changed from 20 years ago to now, I mean, there's so many different versions to keep an ongoing list of every change that's occurred. To my knowledge, it never happened to the airport. So really, the lease that we just processed came from the, the last incarnation of the lease, which was not the one that was signed 20 years ago. Um, but that came straight from the, the risk department. And if you go back through the leases, you'll see the, the um, insurance requirements change from year to year and stuff like that. That was something that was um, their recommendation. I actually reached back out to them this morning to just get some clarification on that. Haven't heard back from them yet, so I'm just kind of waiting to see what they say. Mr. Shook. You know, I've been involved with airport properties for 30 years. I've never, never even on commercial airports, Monterey to be exact, heard of a one million liability on a, your personal vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it's cost prohibitive, number one. Number two, some insurance companies might not even give you the insurance. On a commercial vehicle, sure, I get that, but not for an individual, and then I would ask, what does the city do for, let's say, the parking lot at the police department? Is everybody that drives in there on airport or on, you know, the city, do they have to have a million dollars? Why are they just, you know, stating the airport uh, tenants? And that's kind of what I forwarded to the risk department. We're kind of asking is like, well, what's the, you know, what are you hearing from your insurance providers? Why are they saying they require this? And really at this moment, it's just I'm kind of hanging out and waiting until they kind of get back to me and, and take it one way or the other and get an explanation for it. Yeah, because everybody's going yeah. to be parking out <laughs> beyond the fence and walk into their hangar. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not getting a million-dollar personal insurance on my vehicle. So I'll walk. The other question I had on that, just um, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Mm -hmm. Every single lease that gets signed has to go to council. Yes. And the idea of the master lease was we have generic language so that the airport advisory board doesn't have to make a recommendation on every single lease that goes to council, that mm -hmm. we've done the recommendation one time. Um, but it's also a starting point and was said pretty expressly in the meeting that it gives you some flexibility to change. Mm -hmm. Recognize there's a difference between changing a substantive requirement in the lease versus, you know, negotiations with an individual tenant. But every single lease still goes to city council. Mm -hmm. So city council still has the opportunity to weigh in. Yep. Everyone always has the opportunity to comment on it at council yep. or comment on it here if we need to make a recommendation. That's true. Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, anyone else have anything in the airport manager updates? Okay. Uh, we have no information items tonight, so we have two action items. Um, I will have a public invited to be heard for each of these items, but as we've done in the past, I'll start out with um, with us. Let us talk about it. We'll open up for a comment, any further discussion, and then uh, take a vote. So our first item is the sustainable aviation resolution draft. Um, believe I Phil, you guys are listed as the presenters. Would one of you guys like to start that? Uh, discussion. Oh, or I I'm, I'm I happy can, to otherwise. I can certainly start that. Um, Thank you. So the sustainability resolution that's kind of been passed back and forth. Um, we had an initial draft. It went to the city, and then it kind of went back to the airport advisory board, and there were some revisions made. Um, so it's just kind of at a point right now where I think we're pretty comfortable with having a final draft for that. It should have been put out in the packets, if I recall correctly. Yeah. So at this point, I think it's kind of been through everybody's hands and some people's hands twice, and we were just putting it up there for an action item if it there wants to move forward with the vote to approve it. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, kind of further that this, if you remember, we had a discussion, I think this was probably October or November, 
where um, both, I can't remember the department of the city, but a, a city sustainability person mm -hmm. and Longmont Power and Communications person were both presenting to us, talking through the resolution. Um, it was a much longer, more mm -hmm. detailed resolution. Um, Russell did a lot of work to, I think, uh, make it a little bit more targeted to the airport and to being a resolution as opposed to an ordinance. Difference being resolution, please correct me, uh, Councilmember Martin. Resolution is a statement of policy intent. It is kind of a direction we're going. It is not binding. It doesn't hold us to anything, but it kind of expresses where we'd like to go forward. Um, thank you. Um, so that's what has um, turned into the resolution that's in front, or I guess recommendation of a resolution that's in front of us. Um, there are two statements in the whereas section that are not in this that we've gone back and forth on that I'd like to kind of add by motion as we get into the discussion. Um, I'll read those and then we can, I'm not even officially motioning at this point, but I'll read them so we have them, open it up for discussion, open it up for public comment. Um, so those two are, whereas electric aircraft now in commercial use are quieter than general aviation aircraft driven with internal combustion engine and whereas reducing noise from repetitive short range activities such as pilot training will improve community relations with the airport. Um, and those get added in really anywhere in the whereas is. Um, and I'll repeat those, yep. So first one, um, I'll pause in between them so I'm not just reading them. First one is whereas electric aircraft now in commercial use are quieter than general aviation aircraft driven with internal combustion engines and whereas reducing noise from repetitive short range activities such as pilot training will improve community relations with the airport. And so one of those, the first one had some concerns. Um, originally it was worded a little bit differently but concerns around the fact that the aircraft may not actually be quieter. Um, there's been a lot of discussion back and forth and uh, some articles pointing out that at least some of the electric aircraft now in commercial use are in fact quieter. Um, and the second statement is kind of, I actually think it's pretty cut and dry, reducing noise is probably better for community relations. It doesn't actually tie to electrification directly. Um, so those are the two I would add. That's my perspective. I'm open it up for any discussion anyone has. Um, and then we'll get anyone else as well. Board members? Mr. Salamatine. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not an expert in electrification of airplanes, but uh, my uh, people who are much smarter than me tell me that it's the propeller that makes most of the sound. So I'm not sure about the first one. And the second one, I think that we should encourage as many people to take up aviation as possible so we have a future as an airport because if there's not as many people learning how to fly, I am <laughs> that maybe we are getting ourselves out of an airport. So I think we should uh, not include either of those. And I would respectfully disagree um, with both of those. Um, I recognize that there is a certain baseline of propeller noise. Um, I would say new ones are probably quieter, but even so combustion engines certainly generate their own noise. Um, and I absolutely agree. I do not want to discourage anybody from getting into aviation. I would like more and more of it, but um, I would say quieter is probably better for the community, period. And again, no, um, no policy from this, no requirements from this, but I would generally say having a quieter airport is a good thing. Uh, Mr. Dean. Yeah. Um I do think a quieter airport would help. I, don't, I know people that, you know, complain about the noise, but I don't know why they move next to an airport. Um, but has there been any studies for actual decibels that, I mean, you can say loud, quiet, it's, it's just ambiguous. You know, what's loud to me might not be loud to you. Do we have any actual um, measurements that are actually uh, have been taken to qual quantify or qualify what would be um, how, how quiet or how loud an electric aircraft actually is? Um, I'm certainly not an expert in this. I'm not going to claim to be. Um, but the I have read several articles talking about specific aircraft that are in operation. They're not FAA certified. Okay. So they're in operation elsewhere in the world that are, in fact, quieter, but I can't give you a decibel number. Okay. Um, Councilmember Martin. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would say uh, you can drill down as far as you want in terms of modern propeller design and how much less noise they make, mm -hmm. um, but it's not really appropriate in a resolution to say any more than quieter because unlike in an ordinance where you know at some time in the future we might want to restrict the airport to you know certain propeller designs although I don't think we can I think the FAA would have to do that but that's ordinance stuff the fact that that we know that much quieter propeller technology is out there is really enough to to put it in a resolution um, and you know as, as far as engine noise well electric planes don't have engines they have motors and if you've walked past to a, a Tesla when it's pulling out of a parking place, you know that they are dead silent. So um, I don't. I don't really. Um, I, I researched this when when um, Russell was not able to to, to finish up, and uh, uh, I did it with John Grunsfeld, uh, who who you know is that kind of an engineer. And, and would know, and so I think we're pretty safe in saying that the propeller noise is quieter. Thank you, Councilmember Martin. Um, how's I hit that one more time? Nope, you're good. Mr. Salamitian. Uh, that's a great point, Councilmember Martin. Uh, you're right, it's the propeller that's the main function of that, right? So associating that with the type of engine may not make as much sense, but I'm all for mitigating noise whenever possible. I just want to make sure that we're not um, preventing people from using the airport in ways that could pr uh, produce economic gain, i.e. training others to use the airport, hopefully creating more use of the airport, right? Councilmember Martin. Yeah, thank you. Uh, a resolution actually can't do that. You know, uh, again, as as uh, Harrison explained, it's a statement of intent, and there's if you read it through, there's nothing in it that says a classical airplane can't use this airport. You know, the FAA has rules that says, you know, if it, if it requires too long a runway, it can't use this airport, and that's about the only restriction um, that that we've got and it's not something that the city can impose. So there, there's not any, any reason to worry about passing this restricting the use of the airport. Um, and by the way, the, the first um, electric plane likely, I mean something could get ahead, but the first plane likely to be certified for use by the FAA in the United States is a training plane because they want to train more pilots, and it's very much cheaper to use this kind of plane for training because um, the fuel costs aren't there. Mr. Shook. I'm not a, a, a proponent of electric aircraft, number one. Um, to me, being at a 5,000-foot elevation airport, the amount of battery and you know the weight of the batteries the thrust i think it would be dangerous to be honest with you um, again i i haven't read too many articles and um, i just think that i don't know i think we're a little early uh, for that type of uh, aircraft here at longmont myself that's I would agree with you we're early, but I don't know that that's a bad thing. I think that's, I mean, so my personal perspective, um, one, just because it was brought up, strongly would disagree with any resolution, ordinance, anything that attempts to restrict any particular type of aircraft from operating at the airport, period, full stop. Two, electrification is coming. The technology is not there today. It may not be appropriate at Longmont today or tomorrow or, you know, one or two years down the road. But the city has made a, I think, push across the city to, towards sustainability. It's a priority of the council. Um, 
there is going to be resolutions like this coming, and I'd like it to be ones that reflect the best reality in aviation today from the experts, um, and we are those experts for the city. Um, I also think setting ourselves apart from other airports and being on that cutting edge is a good thing for us. Even if none of that comes to pass, this doesn't restrict anything. It doesn't you know, require anything to happen. It um, helps, say, have a little bit of you know, proof that the city is thinking about this, is making this serious when, say, we're putting in for a grant for electric charging stations or going out and seeking funding from an organization or anything like that. It does nothing beyond that, period. Further board comments? I'll open a uh, public invited to be heard. If anyone would like to speak on this, please come on down. Same rules apply as before. Please start with the uh, name and address. Al Manley. Five minutes. Uh, I'm back. Just for his uh, 940 Ranger Lane, Longmont, 80501. Just a clarification for Levi. It was just a comparison from the um, Is the council approved in December 2022 to the what we were presented uh, a week ago, those two documents. So there would have been, if there were any changes, it would have been real easy to track. Thank you. Anyone else? And I would um, just suggest we stick to the resolution. There is still another public invited to be heard at the end for any other business. Hi, my, na <clears throat> my name is Rick Basilier. I live at 420 Nebraska Avenue in Berthoud, 80513. I'd like to speak to the lease issue. It seems like things are still pretty fluid, that nothing's down in, in uh, concrete yet as far as 20 years, 25 years renewals. Uh, one thing that's just come to public knowledge is that uh, Fort Collins Loveland Airport is offering to the public 50-year leases inexpensive leases and that's the way their their term is so i just like to if you would uh take that into consideration when you're uh you know working on the fluidity of this lease thank you thank you melinda melinda jordan 1110 twin Peaks circle longmont um to the um, resolution. I live uh, in uh, downwind, if you're heading in for 1 1, and I can assure you that I can't hear propeller noise because the engine noise is so loud. <laughs> and so, especially when uh, you pull back, you know, you're at, at the mark and you pull back and a lot of backfire. And uh, so I, I do, uh, I believe that the engine noise. Uh, on a carbureted engine, internal combustion engine is um, considerably higher than anything the prop is going to produce. And then the resolution was um, not like grandfathering out any types of aircraft. We'll still have jets. We'll still have, you know, vintage aircraft, uh, uh, powered parachutes, and other things that make a lot of noise that don't have a noisy prop. Um, I understand the master plan has the decibel level listed for what's acceptable the and I know we that was all challenged with mile high um, so that's all on the record I want to say it's like 65 but that's just a guess okay so that was all challenged with mile high and so that's already been vetted for the um, the noise level that's allowed and acceptable and while I'm not one to uh, want more government and more documents and more regulation um, I was in, encouraged by this that we could be at the forefront. Um, as Harrison was saying, let's get at the front of it. Let's be the first ones. It's going to be training aircraft. We pretty well can see that that's, that's where it's going to begin. Um, whether that training aircraft is going to be, uh, I remember hearing that it may not be um, qualified for a regular private pilot license. It may only be light sport or something like that. But whatever it's going to be, if they come to our airport to recharge or buy something to eat, um, you know, go into the neighboring businesses, that's what we'd like to encourage for sure. And our unique uh, situation with the city of Longmont in that the city 
owns the airport and the city owns the power company, Longmont Power and Communication. And that was always the marriage that made this particularly interesting to partner with LPC, potentially have a partnership on the field um, with charging stations, battery, uh, battery stations, things that LPC can leverage and that we wouldn't be negotiating with some with public service that deals with Denver and Boulder and all these other places. So they're part of the family and it made it a very intriguing uh, resolution to be at the forefront, leverage our situation, and um, see what electric aviation is all about and get them out here so we can find out what's noisier. But uh, I guarantee you that I cannot hear. I, there's one plane at the airport that had an extremely long prop that that's all you can hear is the prop noise, but I haven't heard him in a long time, so he may not be on the, that plane may not be on the field. Um, but I definitely would encourage you to pursue this to be on the forefront and be a leader um, and not a follower on this subject. Thanks. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak uh, on this one? Hi, uh, Colin Dealman, 5521 West 103rd Avenue, uh, Westminster, 80020. Um, again, I'm, I'm a little bit new to the meetings. Um, I missed that second part about the flight training, uh, if that could be presented once more, if that's possible. You're not supposed to have a back and forth here. Are you asking just for the whereases that we read? or Yeah, yeah, what, what was that actually, that, that new revision? Okay, I'm just going to read that. Um, whereas reducing noise from repetitive short-range activities, such as pilot training, will improve community relations with the airport. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm a flight instructor by trade, and uh, it does sound like it would have an intent to reduce the amount of flight training, um, which um, I agree um, that that could have significant economic damages, not just for the aviation community, but for Longmont as well. Um, and if we want to uh, grow uh, Vance Brand as an airport and a transportation hub, um, I believe that is going to be the hallmark for Vance Brand. Uh, as for electric batteries, um, I believe we do need to move uh, forward in technology. Um, I believe it's going to benefit not only um, our you know, delicate climate, given that I'm young, I don't have offspring yet, I'd like to one day. Um, Technology is only getting better, and so the express intent, I believe, it is um, good for the state of Colorado as well as near uh, the country to know that um, there is more support behind this technology. Uh, huge investors and companies already working towards this kind of technology um, will probably be more inclined to come to Colorado, knowing that Colorado is being the leader um, in moving towards this kind of technology. Uh, so that could bring more economic advantages as well if we do show that intent. That is only my opinion. Um, and to express the fact that propellers do make quite a bit of noise uh, because uh, propeller moving at 2100 RPMs will break the speed of sound and therefore a repetition of, Mach, of post Mach 1 uh, will create a sonic boom thousands of times per minute. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to um, speak on the resolution? Board members, any other comments on this? Anyone want to make a motion? Um, Council Member Martin. I, um, I just want to clarify one more time. A resolution can't prohibit anything, so it would not be able to restrict the, you know, it would not, for example, restrict pilot trainers to just electric trainers at all. It would, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't change Vance brand in, in any way, except it improves its likelihood of getting grants for electronic aviation. And, and that's all. So uh, just don't be scared of them. That's what I want to say. Thank you. I would like um, comments from the board, if anyone, um, on that second whereas that I proposed, and I know you can't read it in front of you, so I apologize. 
Uh, but based on the comments there, I am actually rethinking the wording a little bit. We have it written in there as, whereas reducing noise from repetitive short range activities such as pilot training will improve community relations with the airport. Um, on its own, I get where the comments are coming from. And I think, uh, board members, you were, you were getting this earlier and I wasn't quite, it wasn't sinking in with me. Um, I'm thinking of it in context of electric aircraft, but it's not worded that way. So I'm wondering either if we reword that to tie it more directly to electric or just say reducing noise exactly. will improve community relations. Exactly. Yes. Um, since it, since the, whereas before it would be about electric aircraft. And I think that might, because I, I agree, I don't want to discourage pilot training. I don't want to discourage those activities. Ideally, they'd be quieter, but that's ideal. And we know that's not now. Um, so appreciate comments on that. Um, Mr. Dean, you were in first. Yes, I actually uh, liked what the, you said that uh, to reword it for, you know, uh, with public aircraft and that, not just in general. So I think that would be good to reword it. Mr. Salamatine? I completely agree with you. I think your second revision is perfect. Okay. Thank you. And thank you for the comments on that, because I, I was not thinking about it that way, um, but I see how it could be read that way, and that was not the intent at all. Any further comments? Um, I'll make a motion then that we recommend that council approves this resolution as is in your packet with um, the addition of whereas electric aircraft now in commercial use are quieter than general aviation aircraft driven with commercial internal combustion engines and whereas reducing noise will improve community relations with the airport. Would anyone like to second that? Moved and seconded. Mr. Dean, did you have comments on that? No, just a second. Okay. Um, does anyone have any comments on that? Then all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. We will uh, recommend that the resolution as amended is uh, presented and adopted by council. Second action item is our annual report. This was also in your packet. Um, this, I will fully admit, I am not as adept at this as Vice Chair Emeritus Jordan is um, or was doing this. So this is my best attempt to kind of blend what you saw in January. That was a straight list of our accomplishments with a little bit more, let's call it marketing about the airport, um, the impact on the community what we what we as a board do and what the airport does and provides to the community. Um, we are required um, under, I don't know, statute, city, charter, whatever the document is that establishes us to provide a report to council. It does not determine the format at all, but this is what I've come up with as a draft. I would love comments, feedback from board members um, this is an action item, so I will do another public invited to be heard on this if anyone from the public would like to comment as well. But board members, first. Anyone have any comments, suggestions, typos that I made? Mr. Dean. Um, yeah, I could make a comment. Um, I don't know if you added it in there, but I know that I've spoken to a number of people on the airport who are, um, uh, they own local businesses in, in long, or around the country, and the to have a private airplane makes it uh, really important for them to be able to get to their businesses on time and be able to conduct uh, and transact business kind of around the country. So we're kind of a, a local hub for a lot of local business owners. Yes, I don't have anything great on that right now because I don't, I don't have a lot of data on that. Okay, I've met a few people that, okay. that own, and I don't know if I, I'm allowed to say like who they are, I don't wanna like advertise, but I've met a few local business owners that have aircraft at the Longmont Airport and they said that, um, it, it saves them money. They can't do their job. They can't get to their stores. Uh, they, if they had to fly commercial, they would. It would take them twice as long to get. You know where they're going. Fair. So that's really important. I think that would be good, a good note to have. So. Anyone else? No comments from board members. Um, public, open public invited to be heard. If anyone likes to speak on this. Linda. Linda, I welcome your comments, but don't um, on my lack of <laughs> making this as nice as yours. 
<laughs> Melinda Jordan, 1110 Twin Peaks Circle, Longmont. Um, I, rec I got some information that was forwarded to uh, you and Levi. What I didn't get uh, was um, uh, medical flights uh, flown by the Phenom. And I'd love to include that. And we had the benefit of a, um, a magazine article about them in the year prior that we were able to share. So I just need to get some data from them. And I realize I haven't got, I haven't followed up on getting that. And then um, it would be, I think, a value to add the economic impact for the area surrounding the airport, which in my view would be, first of all, Flight Deck Grill, and then um, uh, Nelson and Airport Road businesses there, and then it, up to an even uh, businesses on the mall where people would come in, get a car, and, and run over and get something to eat or do some shopping. Um, I don't know if we can paint with that broad of a brush into our plan, but just the immediate area that's even within walking distance that um, I know I go into other areas and park and go, I'll walk up to a mile to go someplace um, to spend some money. And then, um, what was the other thing? Oh, uh, the sky, the revenues uh, for skydiving are remarkable. And um, I haven't asked for that information, but that would definitely be worth pursuing to include in there because the, uh, the revenues from the skydiving operation are remarkable. And uh, any other businesses we have on the field. And we do have commuters, we do have net jets coming in there uh, needing catering services. And so there's a, there's a lot more than just those of us putting around and make an engine noise and propeller noise out there. So the, I guess just to, if we, once we get that framework in for these um, additional items, then it will live in perpetuity and make it easier next year um, to grab that data and plug it in. Um, I will do my part to help get information t uh, forward towards you. Thank you. Um, Colin Dillman, uh, 5521 West 103rd Avenue, Westminster. Um, I kind of feel like a bother now, but um, I just wanted to express that, um, as stated earlier, I do have interest um, in becoming the new uh, fixed-based operator. And so uh, many of this is already in my interest, uh, such as uh, attracting um, those to Vance Brand uh, as a hub so that they we can actually benefit the local communities. Um, I've already considered um, ways to uh, increase transportation from the airport to the local businesses. Uh, many ideas. While a car rental is convenient, uh, we also do want to think about sustainability. And I do have um, connections to get uh, electric bikes that can charge in outlets. No um, actual needed extra infrastructure to charge those. Just need an outlet. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Um, I do have catering interests. Um, while they may not be directly mine, um, I do intend to have some sort of um, food service um, around the uh, fixed-based operation around the FBO. However, um, I'm still very unfamiliar about um, Vance Brands' policies around putting any type of food service. I understand that there's a food truck, but I don't know anything further than that as um, in terms of, I guess, uh, what's allowed. Um, but um, I, I do want to help Vance Brand and the local communities around it and we also do have a go-to-market strategy to bring local businesses also to the airport. Um, so I just wanted to express that uh, there are individuals out there looking to benefit the airport in all, um, in all aspects. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dave Kopp, same address. The um, annual report is still severely missing data that's usable. I mean, it's a lot of blue sky, wonderful stuff, but we still need to know where the money is coming in and where it's being spent. 
there's no profit and loss statement. All it is is here's what we plan to do. I don't know where the money's being wasted, but I, I've certainly seen some uh, very wasteful things being done. And just FYI, uh, I've searched commercial airlines that are electric and there are none in service. There is none approved in Canada or the US uh, by the FAA. So they're all doing point to point testing, but nothing's carrying people for hire yet. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, so board members then. Uh, I'll close the public invited to be heard on the annual report. Um, there are certainly things that are missing in here. Um, financials notably, um, some of the revenues, specific business owners, or kind of talk about that. Um, the economic impact statement, I'm sorry, airport economic impact is something I added based on the last annual report. We got significant questions, uh, primarily from council member Waters but from a couple council members about the impact and if the airport was maximizing revenue for the city. Um, so this is using a little out of date CDOT study, but really wanted to highlight it uh, based on their feedback. Um, it's not something the airport did, so it's a little hard to expand the radius or look at something different, but it should cover what's happening at the airport, including skydive visitors, theoretically. Um, it was also done with input that was an airport manager ago, so it's a little hard to know exactly what went into it at this time. But my question for the board is, given the report that's in front of you, with the deficiencies, with the missing pieces, uh, we can bring it back next month um, with some more in it and vote to approve it. We have the first half of the year to get this to council, or we can move it forward more or less as is since we have to vote on it. And it's kind of hard to vote on significant missing pieces, I think. Um, so that would be my question for everyone. Um, Mr. Dean. Yeah, I say that we um, get the missing pieces and kind of get everything updated and then move it along to the council. We have all of our ducks in a row. Mr. Salamatin. Uh, I want to commend you on your work on this, first of all. Uh, I know it's not easy to put on, uh, put a document like this together, having done this in other types of situations. I do agree that there should be more financial information included within this. However, it really depends on what the purpose of this document is. is if this is like an executive summary type document with those other resources available elsewhere, then it doesn't necessarily need to be included in here as long as that information can be linked to and be accessible elsewhere. So I'm fine with moving this forward as long as the information requested, especially the financials, uh, are available elsewhere. So I think to that point, the requirement that we have is to report on our work activities as a board. And that's really the second true page um, that has Airport Advisory Board 2022 work activities as the header. That's our legal requirement to provide. We've historically provided quite a bit more because we view it as an opportunity to advocate on behalf of the airport. Um, and I, I like that, and that's why we have you know at least an incomplete um, more comprehensive report. But our legal requirement is not even this. It's tell council what we've done for the year. <laughs> so I, I would argue this meets the requirement. Um, I certainly argue, though, it could be better and absolutely can be more comprehensive and tell a better story. Um, council Member Martin, my question, I guess, for you is a little bit on timing. Um, I'd certainly like you to have this before you start talking about budget for the next year. Um, and I don't know if, if we're voting on this next month, that means you see it probably in May, if that's appropriate timing or if doing it faster is uh, more relevant. Yeah, actually, um, the, the budget cycle is not important to council for May. It's important to staff for May because Apparently, there's this scary app that I don't get to see because I'm a council member, but um, uh, the, the staff has to put in budgetary requests in the spring. I think May is the end of May is the deadline, probably, right, for putting in budget requests. And so um, this report would be sort of 
grist for that mill that, of, of justifying bu budget requests, and then the um, financial staff will turn the crank all summer and come out with a budget that the council begins to see in August. So th that's the way the cycle goes, if that's helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, as, as interested in promoting the board, you, you want to try to, to get data in front of, of these gentlemen sitting over here as early as possible so that they can be uh, diabolical in their uses of it and uh, try to get as much as they can for the airport. Um, but uh, in terms of its being official, mm, not so much, you know. So, so the work could could continue for the next month or so, because it doesn't have to match up match up on a going to cycle or going to council cycle. Sorry about that. Uh, but but you do you do want them to to have their hands on whatever uh, case you can make for the airport. Fair. That's very helpful. Um, then I think I would turn the question to Levi and Phil of, I think you guys have heard loudly from the community, from the board, some of the desires um, for you know, things to do going forward, grants, CIP, et cetera. Is this sort of a document helpful for you advocating internally with Joni, Harold, um, finance or anybody, or does it matter if this is a couple months behind and council sees it when they're actually approving budgets? Does it make a difference for your internal advocacy? Okay, and I can talk a little bit about that. And Phil, you have better information, certainly Phil, feel free to, to butt in. Um, it certainly can't hurt. I mean, anytime we put information together to you know kind of justify a case for ourselves and we can take that to council, I mean, the more information, the better. Um, so yeah, as we, as we get close to doing that budgetary stuff, I could, Certainly, see myself, you know, having a good feeling over <laughs> some, a document like that going up. Having said that, um, I don't think it's anything to to sweat too much about. Um, you know, I'm also capable of making a pretty good case for the stuff that we need at the airport. Again, love to see the information. Um, it, it's it's great, um, but yeah, you have anything to add? Well, I think just in in our our minds, as you pointed out, page two is really what we need to do to be official. And the other pieces of this are very helpful when we are writing grants to put that information into those grant requests. So as we're going forward, as we're working with the FAA and CDOT and other folks, we can refer back to this and have a good baseline of the other important pieces and aspects of this airport that we can put out there and try to go for additional funds for. But um, Again, we've met the we've met the requirement that we need to keep the board fun you know keep the for board function of of that report, but the other pieces are going to be very helpful. Uh, Mr. Shuck, I'd like to uh, commend you on you know what we've done so far. I think that if we have a month or so, and there's more information that can go in it, I would say we postpone and um, maybe put a little bit more in there if it's possible. Anyone else? Yeah, I agree with them on that. Agree? Okay. I don't know that we necessarily need a motion then if we're not taking action. Um, well, Mr. Salmatian, well, yes. My question about that, I guess you can ask this or else we'll end it. You got to use the mic, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't sure whether um, this information that we're looking to include in the next iteration is available elsewhere, or whether the only visibility of that information would be in this new revised document that we will then be working on. And I think it's specifically the financials, correct? Yeah. So, Phil, Levi, we've historically had financials in these board meetings, um, at least occasionally. Um, I'm going to request it in the comments at the end here um, as, as we go forward. But right now, I don't think they're super accessible in any kind of location. They'll be in a budget that goes to council. But am I missing somewhere else that they are that's easily accessible? We're just trying to keep um, 
the boards and commissions at the same level of intricacy, I guess, and detail as each other. So this board was asking for the financials and that's beyond what any other board gets to see. Uh, so we were trying to really remain consistent, I think, with all the boards and commissions and, and keep that. Uh, that's really something that's done more at the staff level to take care of those is issues. Uh, this board is not at that level of um, being able to make recommendations on how to spend dollars except when we get to the budget piece, when we ask you specific items that need to go to the go into the budget. But when it gets to the very specifics about how dollars are spent day to day, that's really Levi's purview. So um, we've been asked specifically by our city management to not keep going with those financials. So that's part of what's on our, well, you know, what's, what's kind of driving why we don't keep putting those in. I'm not sure how that started. I guess it was a request maybe from Tim Barth back in the day. And uh, uh, we'll see what we can do, but uh, there's certainly public record. So we have publicly available records that can be provided to this board. So I'm not worried about that. But if we're gonna be starting to talk, if this board's starting to get into the idea of, hey, you spent $43,000 on prairie dog removal, we think it should be $40,000. Uh, that's not something we can really deal with at the staff level. We have to do what we need to do per FAA requirements. And so we're, we have to move beyond the detail pieces of that, but we could provide the overview of the financials. Yeah. I, I understand that. Um, I would respectfully disagree that uh, this is an enterprise fund and we recommend rates to council. Um, one of our objectives is to increase revenue at the airport. Um, so I do not want to be in the weeds. I do not want to be saying 40, 43,000 or anything like that, but I think having a pulse on it would be valuable. Um, and I, I really don't want to do that through core requests. Well, we don't, we don't want you to have to do that either, but uh, <laughs> what we'll do is we'll look at our other enterprise funds and see how they compare. I think you have a fair and valid statement there. So we'll, we'll look to see how those enterprise funds report out as well. Yeah. And I don't, and it historically was monthly. Um, I don't necessarily know that we have to have a monthly pulse on it. I don't know that there was a whole lot of value in things that changed month to month, but um, I do think keeping a better pulse would be val valuable, particularly since we, we recommend rates, which I think is probably a little different than some of the other advisory boards. Anyone else on annual report? So if anyone has anything you'd like to have included or added beyond the comments that were made, or some of the things that people said they might be able to track down, I would ask to please get those in as soon as possible so we're not making a last minute rush, um, given that I'm going to work on this last minute, so anything that's not in my hands before I start doing that is probably not gonna make it in. Councilmember Martin. Um, hi, I, I just have a, a, a tip on this communication. Um, I'm the liaison to the water board which is also an enterprise fund and does also recommend rates. And um, so you and Ken Hewson might get together and see what they do. Because I don't know, but there is a parallel there. Thank you. So we're out of action items. So that would move on to our final public invited to be heard. If anyone would like to bring up anything they haven't already, possibly on the air show or really any topic whatsoever. <laughs> Just in case, Melinda. Melinda Jordan, live in 10 Twin Peaks Circle, Longmont. Um, on the annual report, I do think we, at least the board has to see numbers. We are an enterprise fund, we're supposed to be self-sustaining. If we're blind to what we're spending and bringing in, we can't do that. And uh, the other thing that jumps out at me is that uh, we had a $25,000 budget item for several years for the air show. And we stopped seeing the budget report and didn't realize that that item had left the room and was no longer on there. And so we are not having an air show in 2023. And it would take too long to get any kind of budget approval. We've been talking about an air show for five years, and um, 2023 we had a date, we had, we've been talking about it up here, and it never made it 
and we've always been very transparent that the city in the past had, had we had been able to allocate 25,000 from our budget to go to the event and we were unaware that that had fallen off of the budget so there is no money for an air show no money for deposits there is no air show in 2023 just to clarify so the open house will be for a prospective 2024 air show and uh, with time to then get it in front of council uh, to request that that money be set aside from the budget but again if we don't know what the budget looks like we don't even know if there's 25,000 in there so I think the we're chasing our tail right now um, in specifically with the air show but also just as the board it's you're trying to advise which would include economic impact and um, business development and how to support that and it's all about money <laughs> and so we really need to be able to see um, and I think it kind of it ends up being monthly uh, it could be quarterly but again you're flying blind without that kind of information as we were with the air show so we've lost a um, something that we've worked on for quite a while um, due to not knowing that the money wasn't set aside any longer so I do recommend that um, at least the board if it's privy and not made public you know that's that's okay it's just the people who need to um, be steering those decisions and be aware of what is um, are we making money are we paying our own bills we take a lot of criticism about our reduced uh, administrative transfer fee and because I know we don't have that much impact on the city as some of the other enterprises might or at least that fee feels fair where it's set now given my understanding of the impact um, and I worked with David quite a bit trying to see even as a volunteer if I could help offset some of those expenses so that we could get that fee lower um, so again that fee is going to change probably it has been and is that being are we being fairly represented and fairly billed for that fee and can we afford it are we bringing in enough um, fuel flowage and uh, tower fees and cell tower fees and and lease renewals um, to even support our airport I, I don't know how we can have a discussion about a business without knowing if it's making money or not I encourage you to get the financials and then just to have it on the record that the air show has been called off for September 23rd 2023 there's no future date set um, so the meeting on Saturday will be uh, the beginning toward that process potentially thank you uh, Dave cop again same address uh, I know it sounds like the uh, prairie dog cost is minor amount but just in the last two weeks it's gone from 30,000 to 43,000 you know per the discussion I've just heard and I'm and I know that Levi's been talking to people at Coffee Break over at Elite that, you know, they stopped dropping prairie dogs off at the airport years ago. Well, I don't believe that's true. And sooner or later, I'm going to have evidence somebody else is still dropping them here. And uh, the bottom line is 43000 is not minor. You know, last time I saw an income statement from here, that was probably 10% of our income. And it certainly probably matches the uh, income we get off the uh, cellular tower. So it's not a huge income that we have. And throwing it away when somebody else is <laughs> planning these things, and we got cameras. They've got cameras out there. We don't have access to them. They can find out who's doing this. It, they don't just happen. You know, once you get rid of them all, they, somebody's bringing them back. Thank you. Would anyone else like to um, speak at our final public invited to be heard? Seeing no one, I'll close public invited to be heard and we are on to board council and staff comments. Board members first, Mr. Dean. Yeah, for Levi, um, I wasn't aware that they had pulled 25,000. I thought it was really interesting. Do we have any information to when this occurred and and who, who or how that happened? if we traditionally had money set aside for an air show? So the uh, last time that uh, the board voted to actually have an air, air show was actually conducted after budgeting was set for that year. 
And I'd like to use your question as an opportunity to answer. It was brought up that uh, we just didn't have the money to do it. That's not necessarily true. I actually went to city council and we were going over the progress of getting a procurement to actually get all that money. Um, so getting the money actually isn't a huge deal. It was told to me we could get that certainly by September 23rd. So that's not that big of a hang up. I think the biggest hang up was there, we're this far along in the year and essentially no real planning has been done. So, I mean, this meeting we're having Saturday, I was gonna kind of throw it out there to everybody comes, you know, what kind of interest can we get? What kind of, you know, people can we get moving on this? Is September 23rd an option? My gut tells me that because of where we're at, we're at probably not. Last time I did an air show, it was two years of planning. Uh, by this point, we were having lots of meetings and we were, we were sorting out volunteers and parking and stuff like that. So I don't think it's super practical, but I want to have that discussion with everyone else who's interested in being a part of an air show. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other board member uh, comments? Uh, we have on here ideas for future agenda items or 2023 work plan. Any thoughts on either of those? Um, I know we talked through 2023 work plan a little bit in January. So fine if that doesn't change any future agenda items um, beyond having financial updates that we've covered. No? Nope. Um, Mr. Salamatine. Hold on. Go ahead. Uh, seeing that we have a ambitious young person interested in taking over the FBO, uh, I know there's a lot of talk from owners so they're being very dissatisfied with the operations of the current FBO. I think we should talk about what we can do to improve the airport by potentially seeing what we can do by improving the FBO situation. Are you suggesting that's an agenda item for the future? I. It could be. I'm not sure what the process would be for that. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm in favor of having that on a future agenda. Um, I'd probably put that as an information item and we can have a discussion. Anyone else? Councilmember Martin, any uh, other comments for me this evening? Yes. I would just like to... Thank you for passing the sustainability resolution. Um, it will make some people tomorrow at the city council retreat very happy. I know it was kind of painful getting, you know, everybody aligned that this is a forward looking thing that's not going to change any anything. So I appreciate you, you know, doing the painful work of getting there. Um, and, uh, you know, it it's just it's it's gonna do some good and and I I think that uh, uh, a lot of things uh, a lot of good things will come out of it. Uh, the FAA, by the way, is looking at a special approval for the Pipistrel trainer, so um, it's not as far away as it sounds. Thank you, Councilmember Martin. Uh, Mr. Shuck, you had something. Yeah, um, with only four board members, is there any way to do the application process early to maybe get three more board members? That is a great question. Um, I look to the city staff. I know there's a mid-year recruitment. Any details on that or any way we can do it? Sooner? We actually already kind of asked about that and said, hey, is there any way we can have like a special, you know, little... And they told us, no, not really via our rules. So unfortunately, we're kind of stuck. Do you know when the next recruitment cycle is? That I don't have off the top do of you, my head. Do you have? All right, Councilmember Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I do. Um, uh, the the uh, applications will begin being accepted on Monday. So it's opening up real soon now. You have six weeks. And... Um, yeah, so it's 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 not really long that long to wait. Um, you know, you have. To, I'm sorry, you have to get along with only four members for this amount of time. Um, I am um, uh, doing an outreach um, to try to get a, a more diverse population of board members, and 
Uh, I, I was originally thinking that maybe does not apply to the airport so much, but maybe it does because is that upholstery business still out at the airport? Or were they a casualty of the pandemic? Uh, to my understanding, and I was looking into them a little bit too, I can't find any information on them recently. I think they're no longer there. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh, well. Um, but anyway, yeah, um, we're there's, there's going to be some little uh, reminders that you can apply on uh, Longmont Public Media on, you know, Channel 8, 880, and, and uh, on the city website, and uh, all kinds of things to, we, we can, you know, look and make people more comfortable. I'll, I'll send Harrison uh, some links when they're up, and uh, uh, he can send it out to the board. Yeah, and also when all that happens, I'll post it in the FBO and get stuff posters up and stuff like that too. So hopefully we get yes. we'll get more interest, perhaps. Right, we, we can we can get you some. Even if if people are are not seriously comfortable with being online, we're they're going to accept uh, paper applications this year. So uh, we can maybe bring you out a little stack of them. So yeah. Thank you, Councilmember Martin. Thank you, Mr. Shook, for bringing that up. Um, when we had our last selection process, which was at the end of last year, there were three um, positions open, two um, members whose terms were ended. I was, I guess, three members whose terms were ended. Melinda was one of them, I was one of them. Um, we had two applicants for the three pro places. Um, so we, and now we're down to four of us instead of the five we started with. So. Would really encourage anyone who is a Longmont resident who meets the requirements to please, please, please apply, um, and and be a part of this. Um, it is rewarding, frustrating at times, but it's kind of fun and very rewarding to influence how everything's going at the airport. Staff comments, Levi, Phil, anything we missed? I think I covered the ones I covered with the air show and stuff like that. Do you have anything in addition, Phil? All right, we should be good. Okay. No other comments from board members? Um, we will adjourn our mind tonight meeting. Thank you everyone for being here, being part of it.